click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study about the differences between two of the most important water softening processes. Now when I say water softening processes, I take hard water and then convert that hard water into soft water. How do I do that? I remove all the impurities which are present in the hard water and once all the impurities and all the dissolved gases are removed from the hard water, it automatically gets converted into soft water. Let us see in detail the differences between the two of the main processes, the ion exchange process and the zeolite process. exchange process zeolite process this process can produce softened water with residual hardness ranging of 0 to 2 ppm now when I'm talking about 2 ppm it is 2 parts per million that means over here the ranging that means the amount of impurities the number of impurities should be only from 0 to 2 ppm whereas in zeolite process this process softened water with residual hardness ranging of 0 to 15 ppm so where the zeolite process can do more than the ion exchange process. The second point states that the resultant water is suitable for all types of boilers, especially high pressure boilers. Over here, there is no restriction as compared to the boilers. Now, there are different kinds of boilers. These different kinds of boilers may have different kinds of pressure in it depending on the devices which are installed in it and depending on the mechanism it has. Well, ion exchange process is suitable for all kinds of boilers, especially suited for the pressure boilers. But when it comes to zeolite, process the resultant water is not suitable for use in high pressure boilers water can be used only at low or medium pressure boilers that means that this process is cannot be done for high pressure boilers only for medium or low pressure boilers the third point is the cation and anion exchange beds used are more expensive hence capital cost is high over here in ion exchange process, we have to have the cation bed and the anion bed. Now when I am talking about cation and anion bed, these are the different beds which actually come and mix with water and make sure that the cations and anions in the water are removed and the water is then pure. But to do that, we need to keep on refilling these beds. And to refill these beds, we need to put on some amount of income. And that is the reason why this process becomes a little bit more expensive. Zeolite softener is comparatively cheap, hence capital cost is lower. The fourth point states the softening plant is not compact hence occupies more space. Over here the softening plant is compact hence occupies less space. So now why the softening plant of iron exchange process is not compact because over here I have three cylindrical chambers. The first is for cations, the second is for anions and the third one is for the dissolved gases. In the first process in the first cylindrical chamber or in the first cylindrical boiler only the cations will get removed. In the second chamber only the anions will get removed and in the third chamber the dissolved gases will get removed. So in all we have three processes, three phases, three stages which require three cylinders and that is the reason why this entire process cannot be done in a compact space. Well, this is not the same case or the issue for zeolite process and hence it is more compact. The fifth point, the process effectively removes all hardness causing substances. It can also remove alkali metals such as Na or K such as chlorides and sulfates completely. This process can remove only Ca plus 2, Mg plus 2, Fe plus 2 or Mn plus 2 ions. Hence, often water contains salts like NaCl, NaH, CO3, Na2SO4 etc. and dissolved form. So what happens in ion exchange process? As I said, it has all three phases. One is for cation, second is for anion and third is for dissolved gases. So when I'm talking about cations, how will they remove the cations? They'll first break the salts and then remove the cations. Again, in the second phase or in the second cylinder, they will break the salts and then they'll remove the anions. And whatever remains now in the water which goes to the third phase or which goes to the third cylinder is only dissolved gases which are present in water, which are also removed in the third phase. So the water which comes out of this entire process is nothing but purified water which does not contain any kind of salts, cationic or anionic particles, neither dissolved gases. But that is not the scene with zeolite or permitite process. Now what happens in the zeolite process is they just add a zeolite to it. Now when they add a zeolite and a coagulant into the water, the zeolite will try and react with as many impurities as possible but we cannot guarantee that all the impurities will get mixed with the zeolite and then get removed. There are certain salts which do not get mixed at all and they are still dead in the water. The sixth point this process is useful for acidic as well as alkaline water 
This process is not useful for highly acidic water as acids affect zeolite bed because zeolite gets dissolved in it. Soft deionized water does not cause caustic embrittlement in boilers as it is free from Na plus ions. Soft water is not suitable for boilers due to the presence of NaHCO3. We all know that in the zeolite process there are certain kind of salts in this point we studied there are NaCl, NaHCO3, Na2CO3 all of them are present. So because of that the boilers may get affected but over here there is nothing there, there is nothing present that is soft water which is extremely pure and that is the reason why there is no embrittlement or cracking of the boilers. The boilers do not get degraded in the quality. So in this session we studied the difference between between the ion exchange process and the zeolite permittite process. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.